You like um, you like Sebastian? He's up there. It's a cool name too. Let's let's talk to Sebastian to see what he has to say. Let's do it, Sebastian. He, him. You are a pro life atheist. It sounds like. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good, hey. man. Yeah, we're excited to have you on. Mm. What uh, what do you want to talk about today? What what are your thoughts on this? Well, well. So um, I'm an atheist. I'd say I, I I don't align with let's say um most atheists let's say on social or economic issues i'd say i'm more um conservative in my beliefs but i do you know there's some things that i'm more i would say liberal on but one of the issues that i disagree with a lot of my um atheist friends is abortion because um i used to be a former catholic so um i kind of maybe it's kind of something stuck into me but i just feel that um the argument for example that um, matt dillahunty talked about i think um in the earlier years, like in 2014, I was watching his videos and um, and him talking about, you know, abortion, that even um, like the, the right of life and the right of like personal bodily autonomy. And I think he makes a valid point where he talks about that. Yes, that that's the body of the woman and the fetus is um, inside the woman and, and, and is its own, in my opinion, its own separate life and has a uh, moral value. And but the thing is, what I disagree with um, Matt on is that um, where he says that oh that that therefore I don't have like a right to use somebody else's body, and I think that but the thing is that an abortion it necessarily uh, leads to the death of the fetus because it's not like an act of omission; it's an act of commission. Like did you just let? And so so um, so hang on just a second. Hang on just a second for me, Sebastian. Yeah. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure that I'm following along. It sounds like what you're saying is. Whenever anybody uh, in particular makes the argument that we can't override the, the rights of the individual that's carrying the fetus, you're saying that the fetus has the exact same rights as that person, just the entire pregnancy? Um, yes. I would, I would say um, starting when it like has um, a heart, I would, say, I would say I consider that, in my personal opinion, that um, Do you... a fetus starts having the right to life at the heartbeat, in my opinion. Okay, so oh, uh, and I, I think that's, hang on, hang on just a second, hang on just a second, Sebastian, yeah. hang on just a second. So I think there's, I think there's some problems here. Um, and I'm definitely not a medical doctor, please don't, please don't just take my advice on, on medicine, but there is a basic threshold of viability, of the actual ability of an organism to sustain homeostasis. If that isn't capable, then the concept of calling it alive definitely the legal understanding of personhood those really have to come into question and viability is not at six weeks it just isn't mm -mm. and when it comes to when it comes to the medical side of it an abortion doesn't have anything to do with the fetus being alive or not alive it's literally just the termination of pregnancy so that it, there, there's already some shaky grounds here do, do you kind of see where i'm coming from I understand um, where it's coming from, but um, maybe maybe I can further my argument by saying this: that like, um, well, what what would be the difference between like, for example, me, um, like, because for example, I am I, I need, like right after I was born, I needed my mother to survive, right? I, I cannot. But you maintain homeostasis like, on a biological level. That's that's one of the biggest differences that people don't want to talk about because most of us are not medically trained. And when we're not medically trained, we, we aren't understanding what, why there is a contention about whether or not viruses are alive, right? We don't, we don't, we don't have that understanding. And if, if we're debating whether or not this organism is alive, then the rest of these other discussions down the road don't matter because the thing hasn't achieved the basic okay. thing that it needs to, which is the ability to sustain itself on certain biological markers. Does okay. that make sense? So it's not you... the contention of, yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. Not, it's not the argument of of um of necessarily um oh it can like you like dependency on another person. It's more about like the um biological homeostasis. So that's the point you're driving at. Yeah. If 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 what you're saying is that well a, a two month old baby isn't going to be able to go get a job and feed itself and pay social security like yeah but who cares? 
Like, why has that come into play when we haven't achieved a very basic minimum standard that all of us take for granted? Like, I'm not concerned about whether or not yeah. the the like the lipid layers on my body are just going to like disappear suddenly or anything. If that's where we are for a good period of time in pregnancy, if that's where the fetus exists, where just at any moment it could just all fall apart and does like 85 percent of the times naturally. Like, if we haven't gotten past that yet, then we don't have to have all these other conversations. If you want to have a conversation about, you know, uh, eight and a half months pregnancy, you want to say like, hey, at 37 weeks rarity, I, I don't know, I have questions. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, fine. But then you've already agreed that essentially there should be no restriction on abortions all the way up until viability, which is like 20 something weeks, man. And that's I think that is a pretty decent compromise for, for the vast majority of it. And then we leave open the later things specifically for the obviously problematic things to the life of the person carrying the fetus or, or at mm -hmm. that point, baby. Right. I mean, but at that point, it's a delivery, medically speaking. It's no longer considered abortion just by the people that are even performing it. OK, I understand. Let me, so, let me ask you something, Jonathan. Yeah. I mean, Sebastian, let me ask you something. Sorry. Um, because we're talking about what, what you mentioned is there are two people with rights and we're talking about forcing a woman to give birth to something that she doesn't want. Yeah. For whatever reason, she doesn't want to give birth to this to this fetus. Do you think um, along those lines that if, if it was medically shown that you could benefit, your life could be saved by using my kidney? If I was to give you my kidney, your life would be saved. If that was shown to be true... And yet I chose not to give you my kidney for whatever reason. Do you think that the law should force me to give you my kidney to save your life? Because it, oh, it's saving a life. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, absolutely not. But the difference is that is that I, I, be, I, I believe that that um, there's a well, there's a difference between a kidney and a fetus because a kidney it's, is an organ while a fetus is a um, potential or, in my opinion, a human being. Well, but you're, it's a potentially saving your life, though. It's the same concept of saving a life. You're saying that the fetus is potentially a life. Um, do you believe in birth control? Do you think women, sh women, people should use birth control? Oh, no, I am, I am completely for birth control. This was even when I was um, a Catholic. I think birth control should be... Um... <clears throat> well, then you're snuffing out with okay. birth control. You're snuffing out potential lives. Yeah. And that that seems to go against what you said at the beginning, where you said that the entire time during pregnancy, this this thing, uh, fetus, clump of cells, whatever this this thing has the same rights the entire pregnancy. And that that seems to go against the concept of a handful of different, you know, uh, currently available, maybe not in the future available um, birth controls that we have on the market right now. Right. Like that definitely seems to go, go, go against like plan B and, and mm -hmm. the plan C type, type, um, pills and medication. Right. Um, well, cause the thing is plan B is I'm, I'm maybe I'm not educated. If you can maybe educate, cause I'm learning new things here, which is great. But, <laughs> um, but I, I believe from my understanding that plan B it's usually, um, uh, right after, um, there's a zygote at least a week or two, which I don't believe. It um, is, in my, I, I don't ascribe moral value, like, uh, to, a uh, um, a zygote. Um, so then, after. so then that, that kind of goes, that kind of goes back to, to the very beginning where we were talking about, you know, where that line is at which this thing has rights. Right. So now you've just said that, Hey, okay. Like first, first week, let's say first nine days, let's say it, it definitely doesn't have any rights, but from then on, it absolutely does. And I think, I think, you know, we kind of agreed, I, I brought it up, but I think we kind of agreed on this, uh, Sebastian, that, you know, by the time we're at 38, 39 week, yeah, we definitely have to have that conversation about rights. Um, but wh where, where is that middle ground? At what point does, does the thing start having rights? Earlier, you said, again, the whole freaking time. And then you said, well, you, I mean, you at least mark, marked out a heartbeat, which there's problems with that. Often yeah. the thing that the thing that's considered a heartbeat at six or seven weeks is not in any way, shape or form a heart like it, it just isn't. 
Um, there's a thing pulsating, sure, but like, okay, that's not that's not that impressive to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but so so where where do you think the rights exist for this this thing that is currently using the body of another individual potentially against its will? Like, well, the thing is, is uh, as I said, it's the heart. Maybe if um when well maybe I would say the you said pulsating but then if it's pulsing then I'll say at least like a, a fully developed heart because I think that that shows uh, um a signs of life that there's neurological like a brain activity or there's some there's actually like a fully formed heart and it's being I think those are like some in my opinion um objective markers of life. So if if just real quick and again believe me i am i am not medically trained i'm sure there are some wonderful people out there in the chats right now uh telling me how i'm getting all of this wrong and i should never be a doctor which is fine you know uh but uh if it were found sebastian if we could pull out the the medical studies and the research papers and all peer reviewed and checked boxes everywhere and it undeniably confirmed that that criteria that you just gave a fully for- formed heart neurological activity that's actually working and connected and all that 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 doesn't happen until like 37 weeks would you say that you would be comfortable with with ending the life of of that fetus at 37 weeks like if if that were the criteria alone doesn't that still leave us on a bunch of shaky ground uh, yeah you you're you're not wrong there that's right because that's, yeah. that's pretty close to i'd say and i think I think that's one of the biggest that's one of the biggest problems with this with this type of discussion. When when an individual is crafting laws for people wherever the heck they are and somebody asks them, "Well, hey, is the plan B an abortion?" and they go, "Well, I I, I just don't know." Well, you just passed a law on it. And and when other people are standing there arguing and saying, well, well, this is, you know, this is where I think this thing is living or this is what I understand about uteruses and pregnancy and so forth. And then somebody says, well, yeah, what about this specific medical concern? And our responses are, oh, my gosh, I, I don't know anything about that. Mm-hmm. The only reason, the only reason, Sebastian, that I know any of the stuff that I do about pregnancy is because I have a really good friend, student Dr. Ben, who has told me about this and has has talked to me about this stuff from a medical understanding right. and and the nonprofits did a fantastic episode uh not very long ago where it was all medical people talking about abortion and i feel like when we go to those sources the people that are actually knowledgeable we come to find out that the law that was the law of the land for a very long time it took a lot of that into account it took a lot of that crap into account right. and we sh- we shouldn't just be so comfortable with just waving all that away, especially if it will result in the deaths of many, many people that we all agree are people. I don't think there's a th- single person out there saying if you're 30 years old with a uterus and you get pregnant, you're not a person anymore. And if they are, call the freaking show. The number's below. But uh, what, do, what do you think, Sebastian? Maybe um, maybe some more stuff to, to go look back on? or. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be and, more than willing to actually watch that episode because maybe yeah, it comes yeah, from, you know, I appreciate you pointing out my flaws, which is that's what I'm here to do is to learn. So, well, I appreciate your open mindedness. Mm-hmm. I think, and and to Secular's point, many of the laws that are trying to be that are on the books in some of these states that will become the law of the land if Roe v. Wade is overturned, which we fully expect to happen. Mm-hmm. These laws are these laws are basically going to prohibit abortions for time periods of pregnancy bef- pretty much before the woman even knows she's pregnant. And that's problematic to begin with. When By the time a woman finds out she's pregnant, it's already past a point where she could end that pregnancy if it's not something she thinks she's ready for. That's a big deal. And those are the issues at hand here. And so we could argue about when, it, when it's actually life and when it's not and those things. Again, we got to leave those to medical people who understand those things. But what we're looking at here are laws that are so outrageous that women who are are going to be affected by those are going to be in danger. And we're forcing these women to carry a pregnancy out that they have no desire to do for reasons that are no, most of the time, w- whether we realize it or not, they, they, you, why would we force a woman to bring a child into this world who doesn't feel like she's financially, um, emotionally, 
mature enough or whatever reasons to to give this child a good life because i guarantee you the people who are wanting to pass these abortion laws are not lining up to take care of those children uh -huh. and that's uh -huh. the problem and so let's let the medical people sort out these issues that neither of us none neither of the three of us are equipped to handle and the bottom line is we we're, we've got to quit trying to allow we, we've got to quit allowing these these people to, to force women to do things they don't want to do that's the problem couldn't agree more, Dave. But Sebastian, uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on in a second. But give us give us a quick thirty second wrap up. Tell us your thoughts. I I, I think it was a good call, and and we we learned some stuff. We pushed back, but you know we're we're trying to progress a little here. So what do you think, man? Give us give us a wrap up. Well, well, no, I really appreciate. It. I think you've um, you know I'm an open minded person. You know, since becoming an atheist about you know three years ago. So um, I'm. You know, thank you for bringing up those arguments. I'll actually check out that nonprofit um, episode, so um, I'll look it up on YouTube. So, um, really appreciate it for opening my mind, and I'll and I'll give it a second thought on my position. Thank you. That's that's awesome, Sebastian. Thanks so much. We appreciate you.